Hi, this is Danielle, the domestic scientist. In today's video, I am trying Gordon Ramsay's pumpkin soup recipe for the first time. So stay tuned. So I happen to love Gordon Ramsay and I've always watched Hell's Kitchen and Kitchen Nightmares and some of his other shows on television and I also uh, watch him periodically on YouTube. So I saw that he had made a pumpkin soup with wild mushrooms and he got over 2 million views on his YouTube channel for this soup. Now I've actually never had fresh pumpkin before so I was really excited about trying it. So I have this huge pumpkin here that I did use in a tablescape. If you haven't seen it I'll have a link to the description uh, box below. But now with the the tablescape is over we are going to eat this pumpkin now in Gordon's video he wasn't like really detailed about his recipe so I'm not measuring anything as I normally don't in the kitchen and we're just going to get it started now I will say this is my first time handling a fresh pumpkin and I didn't realize how hard it was so my husband did cut it for me but once we got it open the first thing you're supposed to do with this pumpkin is your support to clean it up and score the flesh so that when you put the seasonings on they'll soak up so it really creates uh, a little bit more surface area for your seasonings so I'm gonna go ahead with my knife and I will tell you I think I scored it a little bit deep I have to say um, <laughs> I cut the I cut the pumpkin a little bit uh, deeper than I thought I had and even though it doesn't break it uh, early on in the video what was funny is when I took it out of the oven I noticed that um, I hit the pumpkin had fallen apart because I scored it too deeply and it honestly brought me back to like science class when I had to dissect animals I tell you I don't always realize how superficial I should be cutting something and I remember the first time I did a dissection I was supposed to like cut through one muscle and I had cut through like four or five of them that's why I, yeah I'm glad I'm not a surgeon and you should be glad too so now I'm gonna go ahead and start seasoning my pumpkin now in his video he did use a couple of seasonings and some spices but he didn't go into a ton of detail about uh, the seasoning profile so I'm gonna use some pepper at this stage and also a little bit of Creole seasoning now I'm going to go ahead and put my fresh garlic right on top of the pumpkin and um, then I'm gonna add my fresh rosemary now I roasted I took out all of my garlic cloves and then I roasted it instead of leaving the garlic whole which I'm thinking I probably should have left it whole because my garlic over browns a little bit but this was actually my first time roasting um, garlic as well so for me it was a little bit of a learning experience so I'm gonna go ahead with the fresh rosemary and put that right on top of my pumpkin and then I'm going to top it with some olive oil as well and of course this is that extra virgin olive oil that all of the chefs are raving about so once I have all of my seasonings in, I'm just going to put this pumpkin on some trays and I'm going to roast it in the oven for a little bit until it's nice and tender and then I will be back. So in Gordon Ramsay's video, he did saute some wild mushrooms. Now he had some exotic expensive mushrooms I had never even heard of and could not even begin to pronounce. I don't have that type of budget and that type of access to uh, these specialty mushrooms, so I'm going to do this the low budget way. I have some white button mushrooms and also some portobello mushrooms that I've cleaned and sliced up and I'm going to go ahead and saute that in some olive oil. Now to my olive oil, this is where I'm really going to start working on seasoning and flavoring these mushrooms because to me mushrooms are so important and they really need to be seasoned. So I'm adding some more Creole seasoning, I'm adding some pepper and I'm adding a little bit, a little bit of cardamom which is one of my favorite spices. I'm also adding some smoked paprika as well and a little salt and pepper to this blend and of course I'm putting in some more stalks of this fresh rosemary. Now when I I saute my mushrooms I put the whole stock of fresh rosemary in there and as I continue to stir it over time those little leaves are going to come off and all I'm going to have left is that stick and before I start to eat I am going to go ahead and pull that stick out and in this case I only use two stocks of fresh rosemary so I know in the end I just need to go fish out two of those sticks 
And so that's another way that I do it. Now, if you're going to use fresh rosemary, just know that it's a very tough herb. And so you do have to cook it down a little bit longer than you would have to do for like a basil or something that's much softer. Now, you guys, I wish you could smell my kitchen right now because this rosemary is just incredible. It's so fragrant. And also I can smell that um, garlic roasting in the oven as well. So I'm having a good time right now. So I put in a little extra olive oil and I'm going to fry this down till it's nice and crispy. I'm also going to add a little bit more of the smoked paprika because it just adds a nice earthy flavor to it and it also turns the color. Now for when I'm cooking and I'm trying to figure out how much to season something, I often don't taste while I'm cooking, but I look at the smell, I look at the color, and I look at uh, kind of the texture of things as I'm cooking. So right now it's a little bit lighter than I want it to be, and when I get that seasoning just right, it usually turns it a little bit darker and a little bit redder. Now I should also mention that I, it, along with the uh, garlic, I did roast some red pepper in the oven. I just threw the whole thing in and I sliced it up, and I'm gonna put it in with the mushrooms as well. It, adds a little bit of color and a little extra flavor to the mix. Now I'm going to use a little bit of garlic paste, a little bit of ginger paste, and whenever I use garlic I do like to pair it with ginger because when you eat garlic you know it really has a smell and you can smell it down the road. So what I do is I do um, combine the garlic with ginger and when I do that I find that it really cuts down the odor of the garlic. So and actually you don't really taste the ginger either but the ginger does add a little bit of heat to your dish. So I did put a little red pepper paste, a little garlic paste, and um, a little ginger paste. And I also put a little bit of minced garlic in here as well. And so with all those seasonings and herbs, you know it is smelling good and it is sure to be delicious. So I'm going to continue to saute these mushrooms until they are nice and soft and until I get the look and the color that I want. And then I'm going to scoop the mushrooms out and I'm going to leave all of that flavored olive oil at the bottom because I am going to pair my soup with a grilled cheese sandwich. And I'm going to fry the grilled cheese right on top of all of this oil that's in the um, pan. Oh, there's one more thing I remembered that I added. I went back into my cabinet and I found that I have a little bit of summer savory in there. And so I added that to the mix as well. Now, savory is another one of my favorite herbs, but it is so hard to find. And so I really ration it out. But based on the rosemary and the smells that I was getting in the kitchen, I thought it might pair well. So I sprinkled a little of that as well. So I'm so excited. The mushrooms are starting to cook down. Now when you add salt to mushrooms, it starts releasing some of the water. And so I want to make sure that I cook all that extra water out and then the oil is left and it really starts to fry and brown those mushrooms. So this does take a little bit of time. Um, I cook it on like a medium to high heat and I just continue to let it saute until um, I have nothing but oil and all that water is evaporated out. The mushrooms will shrink down considerably, but they're still going to be delicious. And when you bite into them it's still going to be very flavorful and I'm also going in for a little bit more paprika because that's just my herb and that's just my spice right there and so you're going to be able to see that it's going to turn this beautiful beautiful red color and it's going to have that slightly golden hue to it they're so good So now that I have sauteed my mushrooms and onions, I've lifted them out of the pan and I've left all this delicious flavored oil and I'm going to use it to help season my grilled cheese sandwiches that I'm going to make. So I have a couple of slices of brioche bread and I do dunk them in the oil for just a couple seconds and then I make sure I coat each of them in this oil and then I'll go through the process of frying and assembling uh, my sandwiches. So for the bread, I'm using a brioche bread that I get from the Walmart bakery. It is so delicious. Now this particular variety is apple cinnamon because that's all they had in the store. I was looking for pumpkin, couldn't find it. Now Walmart's bakery does make several different varieties of brioche bread as well. Um, the, the pumpkin's really good. The apple cinnamon is incredible. Uh, they have a chocolate one that I have not tried. They have a plain brioche and then they have one more that's like a vanilla and it kind of tastes a little bit 
like a um, cream cheese danish. Now that one, if you can find it, is absolutely delicious. And I have made a number of sandwiches and French toast with that as well. But the brioche bread is a little bit like a croissant. Um, it's a little flaky and a little softer and a little more delicate. So you don't want to flip it too much if you don't have to. You don't want to agitate it. You don't want it to flake up on you. Um, and also it soaks up butter very well. I do use a lot of brioche for French toast, but I definitely love it with a sandwich and it is so good fried and nice and buttery. So now that I have my sandwiches nice and golden, I'm going to set those to the side and I'm going to go back to the oven and check on my roasted pumpkin. So my roasted pumpkin is fresh out of the oven and I'm just taking these two wedges of pumpkin to make this pumpkin soup. And as you can see, the skin is a little bit dried on the outside. I'm not quite sure if I over roasted it or not. I don't know, but I'm going to use this anyway. Now I do think that the uh, garlic looks delicious and the roasted rosemary, everything smells delicious. So I'm excited about using it. I'm just going to um, peel it from the skin and put it into my saucepan. So I do have this saucepan. It is a nonstick um, all clad saucepan that I absolutely love. I have purchased this at Home Goods a while ago and I mean I use this very often. The first thing I'm going to do with the saucepan is I'm going to saute some onions. And this is what Gordon Ramsay did as well. He sauteed some onions and then he put some seasonings on it. So I, I've not actually had fresh pumpkin too much and I was thinking to kind of put some warmer fall type spices on it. So I did put a little bit of pepper, I put some nutmeg, a little bit of uh, paprika, some cardamom, um, and some Creole seasoning. Not quite sure if that's the, the best flavor combination for um, the onions, but that's what I did and I'm hoping that it turns out well. But I tend to blend spices together very well, so I'm a little bit fearless about that. Now Gordon didn't use very much in, by way of spices. I think he just used like a rosemary or something to that effect. I mean, I'm sorry, not a rosemary, but I think he used a um, nutmeg. And I really wanted to have a little bit more uh, complexity to my spices, so I, you know, added a couple extra things. And honestly, when it comes to fall uh, type dishes, I'm you're not doing anything in my opinion if you're not using cardamom I'm sorry it's my favorite you'll hear me use it uh, time and time again I'm going to saute the onions a little bit so that they're nice and golden and then once I've done that I'm going to start adding those big chunks of pumpkin right on top of my um, onions so at this point you're just going to peel the um, pumpkin away from the skin and you're going to just get that um, superficial tough layer that's kind of built up on the edges as it's dried out you don't really want to use that part you just want to get that soft um, roasted pumpkin right into the pan in large chunks so I'm going to go ahead and do that and once I have all of this roasted pumpkin in the pan I'm gonna pour a little bit of water and a little bit of vegetable stock on top of it and boil it for a few minutes to make sure everything is nice and soft and really help distribute all the flavors across the pumpkin and so this is right on top of all those onions and seasonings as well and as you can see this pumpkin is really taking up my pan now when Gordon did his he used I think either a beef stock or a chicken stock that he boiled his pumpkin in I'm a vegetarian so I am going to boil my vegetable stock and I hope that that's going to work out the same but as you can see the pumpkins are pretty tender and when I saw Gordon do his his seemed like it was a little bit softer so I went ahead and I got a potato masher to it to soften it up some more and so really kind of continue to mix it so that uh, it will have a smoother creamier uh, consistency so after you boil um, your pumpkin in your stock for a few minutes you're going to go ahead and pour some fresh cream on top of it now I have to be honest once you start adding the fresh cream it starts looking really disgusting and then you also are going to put in some fresh grated parmesan for flavor because apparently parmesan and pumpkin are supposed to pair well together but I had no idea because I've never you know done a whole lot with a cooked pumpkin so now it looks kind of lumpy and disgusting it looks a little bit like old you know I don't know so the next thing is you're just going to put some of your um, your pumpkin and your cream into your blender and you're going to blend it until it's smooth and that is how we get this nice creamy soup so in just a moment I'm going to go ahead and plate up the soup so you can see the final result A 
Okay, I am so excited. It is time to plate our dish and give my review and recommendations for this recipe. So I'm going to plate it just like Gordon Ramsay did in his YouTube video where he took a white ceramic bowl and then he put in the middle of the bowl a mound of sautéed mushrooms. So I have done the same thing. And if you look at my mushrooms, it has a really nice vibrant color because I did use quite a bit of colorful spices. So when I see that rich color, I know that everything is caramelized well and that the seasonings have really sunk in. So on one side of the bowl, he then goes and pours his pumpkin puree straight from the blender into the bowl. And it poured out nice and smooth and it started to surround the mound of mushrooms. Now I did the same thing and either I'm pouring too fast or I'm pouring too much soup, I started pushing the mushrooms over with the soup. So now I'm just going to pour in a circular fashion. Now the other thing I want to talk a little bit about is the texture of this soup. So when I looked at Gordon's, his seemed like really smooth and picture perfect when he poured his soup. However, mine's is a little bit frothy and has some air bubbles in it and I don't know if that is a problem. Now I believe it's because I probably blended my uh, pumpkins a little too long. Um, I noticed in Gordon's uh, video that his pumpkin seemed a little bit softer to begin with than mine. And that might be because we use a different variety of pumpkin or uh, his might have been a little bit more ripe than mine. So because of that, I boiled mine a little bit longer and I noticed it was still quite chunky even after smashing it with a potato smasher. So after pulsing it for a few seconds here and there, it wasn't blending as smooth as I wanted. So I did wind up blending it a little bit more and mine might be slightly over blended, but still it does not have any negative impact on the taste or the texture. Now I am topping off my soup with some shredded Parmesan, just like Gordon Ramsay did as well. And I have to say that this the soup is picture perfect. It is absolutely delicious. The flavors are there. Those blended onions and garlic and everything and all the spices are delicious. Now when it comes to taste, this soup tastes a little bit more like cream of potato. It does not have a heavy pumpkin taste actually. And so when I paired it with these savory herbs and spices, it, it was just a beautiful blend and a beautiful combination. And as you can see, I have my grilled cheese sandwiches as well to pair with this soup. Now, how I feel about this soup, this is an excellent recipe and it is great for soup lovers. However, I'm not really a soup lover and it was a little bit thick. And I just, after tasting it, realized that even though it's a great recipe, I don't believe this is best served as a soup. So I am going to do a follow-up video where I show you the two other recipes that I use this soup for. And instead of using it as a soup, I wind up using it as a sauce. And I think that it was much better that way. And I have to say, it took this recipe to a whole nother level when I used it as a sauce instead. So I will be posting that in a few days as well. So be sure to look out for that follow up video. So I would say I highly recommend this recipe to anybody who is a good soup lover. And I would definitely recommend the follow up video for anybody who is a sauce lover. So I'm Danielle, the domestic scientist. I am so glad you joined me for today's video. I hope that you give this recipe a try and that you watch part two of my pumpkin presentation. If you like what you've seen today, be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can follow my channel and you won't miss another upload from me. I'm Danielle, the domestic scientist. I'm delighted you joined me today and I will see you next time.